Welcome back to The Bible Says What? Today I will summarize Genesis chapter 26, where Isaac followed the way of his father Abraham and not in a good way. There was another famine in the land and Isaac was about to pack up his family and go to Egypt to find food. But God appeared to Isaac and told him not to go to Egypt, but stay in the land that he was in. God promised to give him what he needed and reiterated the promise he gave to Abraham about making his descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and through his offspring all nations would be blessed. So Isaac did not go to Egypt. Instead, Isaac stayed in the land and went to a nearby place called Gerar. You may remember Gerar where Abraham deceived the king named Abimelech. Well, guess what? Like father, like son, as soon as Isaac went to Abimelech's land, he told everyone, including King Abimelech, that Rebekah was his sister because he was afraid they would kidnap her and kill him. He quickly fell into sin and did not trust the Lord almost as quickly as his father Abraham did many years before with the same exact people. Abimelech saw Isaac touching Rebekah in a way only a husband touches a wife. So he called for Isaac right away. The king asked, what have you done to us? Why did you deceive us? One of the men may have married Rebekah and brought guilt upon the land. Isaac told the king that he was afraid they would kill him over Rebekah. The king, I'm sure, sighed heavily and rolled his eyes and probably thought to himself, why didn't your father tell you about the oath we both took to be enforced by all of our descendants? Remember the one where Abraham promised never to deceive me or none of his descendants would deceive me? Why did you break that oath? But once again, Abimelech forgave the family of Abraham. He then told the people not to harm Isaac or his family and let them live wherever they wanted. Because of this protection issued from the king, Isaac grew very wealthy in that land with crops and livestock. After a while, King Abimelech told Isaac that unfortunately he had to move out of his land. All the Philistines were jealous of how well the Lord was taking care of him and told Isaac that his family had become too numerous and powerful for them to live in the same land. So Isaac picked up his large family and left the area. Isaac then started to dig wells in that new land for water. When he did that, some herders from that land quarreled with him over the well. Then again and again. If you remember, the same thing happened to Abraham as well. A while later, Abimelech took his army commander and went to Isaac to make a treaty with him. The king probably thought, it's deja vu all over again. King asked Isaac to make an agreement with him to never harm his people, and his people would never harm Isaac's family. Isaac made a feast for them, and then signed the treaty, and they swore an oath to each other. Then they departed. On the same day, Isaac's servants raced to tell Isaac the good news. They dug a well with lots of water, and no one wanted to take it from them. Isaac called the well and surrounding land Sheba. And to this day, it is called Beersheba. The most important verses in this chapter are Genesis 26, 4 and verse 5, which state, And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. The thing I think the Lord wants us to understand after reading this chapter is the fact that Isaac followed after his father Abraham's footsteps. God made a covenant with Abraham and with Isaac despite their sins. God will do the same thing for us. We are all sinful people, but God will make his covenant with us through Jesus Christ. Even if we stumble and fall, God is faithful to his word and his covenant and will not break his promise to save us when we trust in Jesus. Have you ever placed your faith in Jesus? Repent for your sin and turn to Jesus for salvation today. 
so you don't have to pay the price yourself. The Father loved us so much that He sent His Son to pay that price, and whosoever will believe in Him will not perish but will have everlasting life. Ask the Lord to forgive you and save you. Trust that what Jesus did on the cross was to pay for your sin and believe that the Father raised Jesus from the dead. Make the choice to be saved today. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up, share with somebody, subscribe. See you next time.